No! <laughs> yes. I'll frighten you to death. I are welcome records roundup number 34 is off and running and before I start um, address the elephant in the room still no record store day pickups from banquet records to show you I know I feel like I've been repeating myself the last couple of records roundup videos but they have had such a backlog in fact they put a photo up on their social media a few days ago and I'll stick it up here now where you can see just the amount of mail, the extra mail that they've had to get sent out due to record store day orders. So hopefully mine are in there among one of those many, many Royal Mail sacks outside their shop. And of course they're a small independent record store who are dealing with, you know, in-store customers and non-record store day mail order and stuff. So they're on the way. I got another email update from them a few days ago as well. So I'm relatively confident that by the time this video comes out on my channel, I will have received my record store day releases. I don't want to keep saying, oh, they'll be here next video when I don't know for certain, but you will see them eventually. I think Records Roundup 35 will be a good one because I've got a few new releases on pre-order that are all coming out around this time. I think some are coming out today, the day this video will be published. Those plus potentially the RSD stuff, Records Roundup 35, I should have a lot of tasty stuff to show you. But I have got some interesting things to show you in today's edition. I think we'll start with a mail opening today rather than end with one. This is an order for two LPs from Vinyl Tap. Vinyl Tap are a independent record shop in Huddersfield. I've used them before a few times. They're pretty reasonable when it comes to prices. Certainly were for one of the albums in here. In fact, both of them were a good price, but one of them you can tend to get that quite cheap from a lot of places, but the other one seem to be considerably cheaper than anywhere else so let me get this mailer open and i'll show you the group name may well be in the title of the video that's your first clue as to who these albums are by and it's a band i've been collecting in i want to say slowly but not that slowly really for a few months now and i'm nearing the end of the collection really they have come in protective sleeves i've probably shown you some of this stuff before but it's been a while since I've opened any mail from Vinyl Tap, so I'll show you these again. They just send out a little flyer with their address on and a few details like social media and what have you. Great website, I do highly recommend them. I think you know by now, any website, any record store online that I'm using on a recurring basis is one that I recommend because I just wouldn't use them repeatedly if I didn't. And Vinyl Tap, like I say, I've not used them for a little while, but I'm always checking them out. And I've just decided to get two albums from, yes, I won't keep it a secret any longer because I just want to show you something else first. Pink Floyd and these are two out of the final three studio albums that I need now just before I get going showing you those I do like what they've done here they've done this before um, they've sent just a, basically a paper list of everything Pink Floyd related that they've got up on the website presumably it's everything on the website and there's not anything that they've kind of got on here that you need to phone them or email them about. As I've just said, I've got almost everything that I really want as far as Floyd are concerned. It's nice that they do that. They've got all the prices, they've got conditions of second-hand and pre-owned LPs and things like that. It's got CDs, Blu-rays, DVDs, T-shirts even. Yes, they sell merchandise as well. Really good site and I like that they do that. It's not particularly useful to me, but it's just a nice little extra mile kind of thing. Right then, the albums themselves, the first Floyd album I'll show you is this one from the early 70s. It'll say the date on screen, so I'm not going to worry about it. 72's ringing a bell, but um, I'll probably be wrong and it'll say the correct date on there. But this is Obscured by Clouds, music from La Vallée. I think that's how you pronounce it, La Vallée. 
So this was another soundtrack album from Pink Floyd, and I think this was possibly the album that came out prior to Dark Side of the Moon. As with a lot of this early period Pink Floyd, I've not heard this. I don't even know if this was an album my dad owned as a child, as I've mentioned before plenty of times. My father was and is a massive Floyd fan. I like that he's got the modern remastered hype sticker on and it's got this kind of old school Lavalet hype sticker on. So I think Lavalet was another film directed by the same guy who directed More, which was a film Pink Floyd did the soundtrack for. And I really like that. It's up there, certainly my top 10 Floyd albums. It might even be pushing top five, actually. I'm hoping this is in a similar vein to that. So not one of Floyd's most sort of well-regarded albums. I do like early period Floyd. This is for the collection. I like these rounded edges on the sleeve as well really take you back to kind of like a 1960s or early 70s record issue. Happy with that, that was about £20. But the next one is one that I was planning to leave till the very end and it basically is almost the end of my Pink Floyd album collecting here. But this was such a good price, probably about seven or eight pounds cheaper than pretty much anywhere else I'd seen it at Vinyl Tap and it's brand new as well, it's not a pre-owned copy. I thought, you know, I'll get this now because I will want it. It is a Pink Floyd studio album and it's the one that came out in 2014, The Endless River. So this was a surprise when I heard that this was getting released. I think it was a surprise to a lot of people. Made over from mainly sessions from the Division Bell with maybe a few new tweaks from Dave Gilmore and Nick Mason. And it was technically Pink Floyd's first studio album in, what, 20 years it would have been at that point, since the Division Bell. Mostly instrumental and ambient, I believe. Two LP set. This was 27.99, brand new from Vinyl Tap. I don't think I've heard anything off this. They released kind of a single from it. I think that would have been, where is it, louder than words, but I'm not even sure I heard that, or if I did, I've forgotten. Pink Floyd's likely final album, because Richard Wright died a few years prior to this. His contributions are on this album, of course, because he was still alive and performing with the group in the mid-90s during the Division Bell sessions. Unlikely to be any more Pink Floyd studio albums that get released now. So, for all intents and purposes, the final Floyd album, The Endless River. Life is a short, warm moment And death is a long, cold rest You get your chance to try In the twinkling of an eye Eighty years with luck or even less So all aboard for the American tour And maybe you'll make it to the top Mind how you go, and I can tell you cause I know You may find it hard to get off So the only Pink Floyd studio album I need now is Metal, and I know I can get that for a pretty reasonable price at a few places. It seems to be a little rarer than, say, some of the others from around that era, such as Relics, Obscured by Clouds, Atom Heart Mother, etc., but it shouldn't be a problem to pick that up very soon. And then my Pink Floyd collection will pretty much be complete, really. Certainly for the studio albums, I do have a couple of live albums and a compilation. So, um, moving on from Pink Floyd to another band I've bought a lot in. Certainly in last records roundup, you would have seen three albums and a single from this act. And here's another seven inch single from Lindemann. This is from the album F und M. Ich weiß es nicht. So not an awful lot to say about this. This was a pre-owned seven inch single bought from a German discog seller. It has got an unnecessary barcode sticker on the back, but that's not really bothering me that much. Plus, at least it is on the back, rather than obscuring the nice artwork on the front. I did originally order this from Rare Waves on eBay, but it never turned up. And to be fair to Rare Waves, who I have used before, and I've always got all my stuff, they gave me a refund instantly as soon as I asked for one. And I did leave it probably about 10 or 11 days 
before I got in touch and said, oh, I haven't received that single yet. The price of this wasn't too much more than what I would have paid Rare Waves on eBay. A little bit more, obviously, with international customs. Track one is what will be presumably the album version or an edit of the album version, Ich Weiss es nicht. And side B is the Ministry remix. I'll quickly show you the disc as it is already opened, but not an awful lot to see. It's not coloured vinyl as far as I can remember. Now there we are, just a standard black 7 inch single there. Does look like it's got lyrics on the inner sleeve. So do I need any more Lindemann? There is one other 7 inch single actually, but it's going for silly money at the moment. Not outrageously silly money, but silly enough that you wouldn't really want to pay that for a 2 track 7 inch single. But um, I'm going to keep my eye open for it. Hopefully I'll pick you up at some point, but I'm in no rush. Getting the albums again was the main thing, and because this and the other single from the album Frau und Mann, Stare Auf, were both fairly reasonably priced, I thought I'd get those. That's the Lindemann collection, doubled up on CD and vinyl. Well, that happened last time, but um, adding the singles to the collection as well. Now I can show you two purchases from, you guessed it, Juno Records. Oh, I love Juno so much, I say it every time. Right, which one should I show you first? Because these are the two final records to show you. I'll show you this one first, because uh, this one's not quite as exciting as the other. This is another in the ZYX Greatest Hits and Remixes series, and it's from Mike Marine. Yes, another Italo artist. Another very kind of cheap and cheerful ZYX release, but you know if you've been following this series now, especially for the last few editions, how much I've been enjoying building up my Italo collection with this Greatest Hits and Remixes series. And this was one that I saw when I did another search at Juno. It was a reasonable price, I think it was under £15. Mike Marine, I think, is a German guy, but um, became big in the Italo and Euro pop scenes in the 1980s. Six tracks on here, but they are the extended versions. I just really love this series, and um, I'm discovering so many artists in the Italo genre that I've never heard before. Can't really say anything else about that other than Mike Marine's Greatest Hits and Remixes is another essential i didn't know it was essential until i started listening to it on the juno media player but another essential and welcome addition to my italo collection And finally, this is an album from Juno. I'd noticed uh, about a month or so back when I was searching up for Italo Disco and I listened to some of the tracks on their embedded media player and I thought, they sound amazing, but I didn't pull the trigger on them. I thought, no, I'll wait. I'm collecting some of these cheapo ZYX compilations first. Eventually I thought, no, I want that album because what I've heard on it sounds amazing. An actor that I wasn't familiar with and I'm not sure many people are going to be familiar with him, 
but um, it's a modern Italo disco duo from Sweden and it is their fourth album it's by Sally Shapiro and it's called Sad Cities it's on the Italians Do It Better record label quite appropriate name for it really which is a American record label I love that sort of um, kind of retro aesthetic that it's got going on here with the track listing and the record label logo now then it's a bit complicated that will be Sally Shapiro but that's not her real name that's her pseudonym but it's also the name of the duo no one actually knows her real name apart from who she works with you know she just calls herself Sally Shapiro but that's also really the name of the act rather than the woman herself it's complicated so this is basically modern Italo disco this is their fourth album it came out, I think, quite a few years after the... I don't know if they split up as such, but they took a long hiatus. And then they came back, I think this was last year this came out, with this. And just, obviously, I've not listened to everything on it. I've just listened to snippets of most of the tracks. Sounds so good. I mean, Italo Disco, for me, is 1980s. That's its pure era. But there are one or two acts. I'm thinking acts like Bunny X and now Sally Shapiro who have sort of a modern take on the Italo sound and yeah this one will be a little more sort of indie electronica and probably a bit more synth pop in places but certainly they classed as an Italo act or a new Italo disco act first and foremost. I will get this open actually because I believe this will be on coloured vinyl. If I enjoy this album as much as I think I will I'm going to try my best to get Sally Shapiro's earlier albums. There is one available on coloured vinyl on their Bandcamp page, which I think will be a good way to go, as obviously I like using Bandcamp as, you know, most of the money goes directly to the artists. This is a two-disc set, this as well. And it wasn't too bad a price, this. I think around £25. Oh yeah, there we are. I think classed as snow white vinyl, this. Really nice white disc there see if there's any insert or anything i don't think so there's the other second disc but i won't bother getting that out i'm just made up that i finally pulled the trigger on this i don't know why i was waiting so long well i do because there was other things that i was prioritizing from juno particularly i think i'm gonna be aiming to get all of Sally Shapiro's other studio albums. I think there's also some remix albums, but they may have only come out on CD and digitally. I'm gonna try and aim and get everything that's come out on vinyl. How easy that'll be, I'm not sure. As I said, there is one of their albums, their second one, I think it is, that at the time of me recording is still available on Bandcamp, although you could sell out at any time. So I probably shouldn't dilly-dally with that too long. And then there'll probably be a case of looking at Discogs and maybe eBay to get the others. But for the meantime, really happy with Sally Shapiro's Sad Cities. your records roundup number 34 for today a relatively prompt one because as i said less stuff in this video to show you than i initially hoped when i was recording number 33 but um, as i said right at the start i know the record store day orders are on the way plus there's uh, i think three or four new releases all coming out around the same time. I'm relatively confident I'll have all of those to show you, ready for records round up 35, and there's some good stuff in amongst those as well. So I do hope that you join me for that. I wanna say thank you for everyone who watched this video today, and of course, special thanks to my wonderful subscribers and generous patrons. Speaking of Patreon, that is the link that is in the description text box alongside my Facebook group link and referrals for websites such as HMV, and Urban Jungle Contents Insurance. I'm gonna go now. What shall I listen to first? 
probably will have started listening to some of this by the time this video comes out. I think Sally Shapiro's top of the list. I do urge you to check her out. I'm assuming check her slash them out it's a guy and a woman but I do recommend if you've got some sort of streaming service or just go on YouTube and look her up and look them up I keep doing it it's not incorrect to say her but I explained that earlier right anyway I'm waffling now so I'm gonna go listen to Sally Shapiro and of course Lindemann and Pink Floyd there as well and Mike Marine can't forget Mike Marine from the Italo Disco ZYX stable and I do hope that all of you will join me again next time for my next records roundup and record collecting video. Cheers everyone. See ya!